Hello, and welcome to probably the final part of this uh, fan fiction reading of a fairy tale Christmas miracle. Uh, so we have only five chapters to go, and this one is the White Rabbit. Let's let's begin. Panther Lily's POV. I was waiting at the end point. I was slowly eating from the basket of kiwis Lovey gave me. Mira and Loxes get here first. They set down their things. Hey, Pantalily, Mira calls, walking up to me. Yeah, I asked, looking up from the basket on my lap. Are we the first here? She asks, crunching her eyebrows together. I just nod my head in response. She turned to Loxus, who, ju who had just walked up, and they high-fived. When he Romeo wandered towards us as they came from the forest, just like Loxus and Mira, I tell them that they're in second place. They hugged. I Carl and Happy came out of nowhere. Happy crashed into Carl as she ab abruptly stopped. Sorry, we got lost, Carl explained. Romeo crossed, Romeo crossed his arms with an, with an annoyed expression. Yeah, sure, he said. Carla twiddled her thumbs and looked away. Urza and Jalal came from the trail through the field. The blue-haired uh, mage was smirking while the scarlet was, well, scarlet. Mira immediately prodded them for answers. They, Urza, refused to tell her. Mira was pouting like a child to Lox's poked her cheek. She playfully swatted his hand away in response. And Gajo, Levy, Natsu, Lucy, Gray, and Juvia all came from their past. Two of the teams came from the field while the other came from the forest. Gray, Gajil, and Natsu all glared at each other. I was here first, Natsu yelled. No way, Flavor, and I was, Gray yelled back, earning a cheer from Juvia. You're both wrong. We were here first, Kajil yells. Well, I say flying to the center. Mira and Lox's were here first, I continued. Nani? They yelled. We were beaten by a barnaid, Kajil asks. Mira's deadly aura radiating from behind them. Kajil shivered and, I mean, a very nice comrade. <laughs> the deadly aura was replaced with a cheerful one. You actually got beat by Romeo and Wendy, and Wendy is small and sweet, I tell them. Why do you always pick on me? Wendy yells as she runs away. What I say wrong? I ask, looking at Gajil. She just shrugged as we watch Romeo running after her. I look back at all of them. You guys tied for last place. I say, looking at their disappointed faces. See, this is what happens when you try to eat one of the scavenger hunt items. Lucy yells at you. Lucy yells at Natsu. Lose! I was hungry. He whined back. <sighs> Technically, they tied for fourth, but you know, you know. People don't understand how that works when, when people tie, so whatever. I mean, technically they tied for last, but they also tied for fourth and not sixth, so whatever. With Rowan, Wendy's puby. I was running into the forest. I was tripping over sticks and stones. Then I tripped on a root of a tree. Instead of hitting the floor like usual, I rolled and quickly got back up. Running and running until I was out of breath and my whole body hurt. I slid down onto the ground, crying. I was in black booties, black leggings, and a navy blue turtleneck, long sleeve dress, black jacket, and a pair of navy blue earmuffs. My dress wasn't keeping my legs warm, neither were the leggings, and my earmuffs had came off and were now lost. My coat was torn from the branches and the temple tumbling. So I was cold. Okay, uh, snow, the snow was melting under me, and the trees above me were letting little light in. A white rabbit scurries up to me and crawls into my lap and slunges into me. I stay there, we stay there for five minutes. I take the time to remember its scent, and I heard footsteps ringing back to reality. The rabbit scampers away off while I continue crying. Romeo comes running up to me breathlessly. He falls onto his knees and hugs me. Once the cry crying stops, it looks at me. What's wrong? He asks softly. Pantalily is always saying I am small and cute. I reply sadly. And is that bad? Romeo asks me, asks looking at me. I sigh. It's just that I will never be a leader like Urza, considerate like Lucy, bold like Juvia, clever like Levy, or strong willed like Mira. I say, smiling at the end. Romeo looks at me and smiles a little. Well, you're right. You know why? Because you're kind and selfless. You will heal anyone even if you use up all your magic. You'll do anything to help your guildmates. And that is what I love about you. I just sit there shocked at what Romeo said. I smile and kiss his cheek. Thanks, I say softly. You okay? He asks concerned. Yes, I reply. He still looks worried too, so I smile to convince him that I'm fine. We walk towards the camp using my sense of smell to guide us. Romeo was hugging me and keeping me warm. I smell the familiar scent following us. It was a warm and fuzzy creature. Wow. Alright. Overprotective much? This can be pretty great.
Lox is POV. Well, day six, whatever. Lox is POV. As as always, I woke up by the smell of food. Mira was busy working in the kitchen. I walk up behind her quietly. She dropped something, but I quickly caught the item. It was an egg. She smiled at me. Thanks, and good morning. She delicately takes the egg. Morning, I reply. I was making... I was thinking about having a free day. Hey, Mir, can we just have some free days? I ask, hoping that she will not hit me. Sure, how about from the day after tomorrow to the day before Christmas Eve? She suggests. That would be nice, I reply. Time skip, 10 o'clock. Everybody was around the tree. Mira was writing on her clipboard. Ships, I asked. In return, she just nodded. I chuckle at her ship craziness. Mira calls for attention and starts. Today, we will st uh, we will have a snowball fight in pairs. Then lunch... Then we can fishing. Good. Then we can fishing. Everybody nodded in approval. Then Natsu brightened. Literally, he went to flame. Do you get to eat the fish? Everybody rather sweat dropped and or facepalm. Sure, Mira offered. Natsu yelled, Woohoo! Mira pulled out her locker room phone and texted somebody. Pig's little niz. Anyways, Mira told us, the pears, guess the pears. All the pears worked on making the fort. Mira was making snowballs while I was making the fort. Slowly, all the pears were throwing snowballs. Runny and Romy had the advantage because of Wendy's magic. Same with Natsu and Lucy. I mean, whatever. Natsu just melt the, melts the snowballs, and Wendy speeds things up and improving her and Romeo's strength. Natsu threw a snowball at Mira, but she sensed it and dodged. Romeo and Juvia... Romeo got Juvia out, Gray with his magic got Lucy, Urza and Jalal. Gaju was being overprotective of Levy in both Mir and I can sense when anything comes near us. Natsu was going on rage mode because Gray got Lucy out. Natsu in rage mode got Gray and Levy out, then Kaju in rage mode got Mir and I out. God, the people who are left are Gaju, Natsu, Wendy, and Romeo. Natsu gets Romeo out, and Kaju gets Wendy out. Then finally, there was ten minutes of Natsu and Gaju trash-talking each other like idiots. <laughs> Natsu kicked a snowball because Gaju called him Flame Brain. The snowball broke in midair and sprinkled Gaju with snow. Gaju hit Natsu with a snowball, and Natsu melted it off. Lucy hugged Natsu and consulted him while he pouted. Maybe he was hugging it, hug. <sighs> hugging Gaju while he scoffed and blushed. Mira was almost ta was taking pictures like a madman and almost fainted twice. Heh, <laughs> she's cute. It's not been to reality when I heard two people. Hey, Mina. Hey, guys. <sighs> the the Pigsana special. Fuck. <laughs> God damn it. Pigsana! Or Mira's POV. Vigzana! Uh, or, I mean, Bigzo and Zana. Zana blushed and glared at me, but I quickly turned to a smirk. Miraxis! Whoops, I mean, Mira and Loxus. Stamma glared at her. Me and Mira? A couple? Not yet. Soon. I heard Loxus mutter, which made me blush even more. Zana approached me and giggled. Did you hear that? Loxus asked. I just nodded. What? What did you what did you hear? Lazana asked slowly. Nothing, Loxus and I quickly say. Bigzel laughed. What? Loxus and I said in defense. He points at us. The curls were running Maraxis over and over again. Silently fangirling at the same time. I tried to hide the growing blush on my cheeks while I tried to think of something to do. Oh yeah, lunch. I went into my cabin, Lazana rushed after me. What you doing? She asked with a cute smile. Making lunch, I replied calmly. So, you and Loxus, she slyly, she, she slyly remarks. What about me and him? I ask, busily chopping a tomato with my back to her. Here the door open and then closed. Big Soul is muttering to him, to himself or whispering to Lozana. One of those. I reached for the bowl right in front of me and someone handed it to me. Thanks, I muttered and started uh, and started making the salad. You need help? The person asked. I turned around to see that Lazana and Bigzel were gone. Loxus was standing there leaning against the counter. Could you mix this? I said, pointing to the bowl of unmixed salad dressing. Sure, he replied. <sighs> Time skip. Uh, Lazana's POV. Mira had invited me and Bigzlow over for the day because she wanted extra overseers for his ships. I had the feeling that she wanted to be with Loxus and that she wanted me and Bigzlow to get together. But still, ships... Crap, I'm turning into her. Well, that's not what that's not that bad. Biggs and I were talking or walking behind everyone and we were going shipping, I mean fishing. We arrive at a small cabin slash store. The sign said fishing and boat rental. Mir opened the door and a satisfying ring set off in the shop. A man around in his late thirties stepped up behind the counter. 
Uh, how may I help you, he asked. He seemed uh, very friendly until he saw Mira. Then he went a bit perverted. Mira, being herself, used it to her advantage. We are from Fairy Tale and would like to rent seven boats, 14 fishing rods, and seven boxes of bait. She said it with a sweet smile and twirled a strand of hair and put it behind her ear. The set Loxus was glaring at the poor man. The man gave us all the stuff Mira asked for for free. Wow. Uh, once we were on the water, I noticed that Natsu and Lucy were acting all lovey-dovey. Same with Gray and Juvia. Well, more Juvia than Gray. Bigsel and I were rowing down a river with forest on either side of us. I just now noticed that Bigsel had taken his helmet off. I take the time to remember every feature of his face because I don't see it often. His green eyes were watching me as I leaned back and smiled. <sighs> Bigsel's POV. Uh, Lazana and I were no longer rowing. Our boat just gently floated down the river. I watched Lazana as she leaned back and sweetly smiled. I kept studying her face, trying to think of something to say. What do you think Mira's up to? She said, slightly laughing. I think she's trying to get her ships together, but Lox is probably distracting her, I replied, and we both start to laugh. The rest of the day goes by, and Lazana and I are driving back to the guild. Uh, I start the car and start down the road. Uh, after around five minutes, I hear soft snoring. I glance over to see a cute sleeping Zana. I quickly kiss her forehead, then keep driving. Hope that she sleeps well. No! Not another ad! <sighs> oh. Okay. Uh, shut up! <laughs> Let's play catch-up, apparently. Um, Amira's POV. I was re-watching some of the shit moments I caught on camera. The first one, oh god. Like, I, I don't really want to, like... This, this, okay, this is completely useless. <laughs> I mean, I don't think we've seen a lot of this, but I don't care. <sighs> uh... God. Okay, that's when Loxus took my camera. <laughs> I'm just not gonna read all that because it's so it's it's unnecessary and I don't like it. Okay, uh, that's when Loxus took my camera. What? There's a picture of when I fell on Loxus when coming down the stairs. Everyone is in the picture except for Happy. I looked up and it was around lunchtime and Urza and Lucy were cooking. Happy! I yell. I saw Bluebird and heard Happy laughing. I snapped around and pull his tail until he was level with me. You finally found out, huh? Yeah! I yelled. I felt a hand on my shoulder. What's wrong, Mira? Loxus asked as he turned me around. Happy came with me because I was still holding his tail. I just blushed and stuttered. Um, mm, er, yeah, he asked. Happy had wriggled free from my grasp and took my camera. Look at what I got on Mira's camera yesterday, he exclaimed, shoving the camera in Loxus' face. He pushed the camera back so he could see it. He blushed and took his hand off my shoulder. I hear some... Ooh, they totally like each other. And did Loxus just blush? He just blushed even more. I just ran into the forest. I hate it when people do that. Lizana is just an exception. Oh, sure. <sighs> Oxus POV. Mira ran into the forest. I know she hates it when people do that, but can only take... She can only take so much before she busts. Glare at everyone and run after Mira. I follow her scent deeper into the woods. I come up and see her punching a tree with tears running down her cheeks. Mira, what's wrong? I held her fists and unrolled her hands. I kissed the top of her hands. Tell me what's wrong. She just looked at me. The only reason why I ship sh sh people is that I haven't been able to tell you something. <laughs> you become cold and ignored me and everybody. Now whenever people say something about us, you avoid it and act like you don't care and, and just frustrates me. She broke down into my arms. I was processing this. Mira's been waiting for me. All our friends have their soulmate because I meddled with their life. I try to talk to you and stuff, but it never works. She mumbles in my into my chest. I lift her off the ground and make her face me. You're the one that I have always looked at and thought she is the one and only. But you were always out of reach. You were the sweet motherly angel of the guild while people shun me. I've always loved you. <laughs> you and you only. I saw sapphire eyes enlarge. She put a silky smooth hand on my cheek. I love you too, and only you. I let her slide down, and we kissed. I, I could still feel tears running down her cheeks, so I wiped them away. Let's get back to the camp, I stated. We smiled at each other. She truly is my angel, but ironically my she-devil. Oh, God. And Christmas, which apparently is the last chapter, so... <sighs> this will eventually be... This will eventually be over. Hallelujah. <laughs> Romeo's POV. 
Uh, it was Christmas Eve, and everyone has put their presents under the tree. Now we were all drinking hot chocolate in our cabin. Mir and Lox are together, so are Natsu and Lucy. Living Gajo, Green, Juvia, Jal, and Urza are just flirty to each other. They, oh... They spend their time together like they won't be together for long. It's kind of sad. Mira had pushed Wendy and I into one chair. Talk about awkward. Let's go to sleep, guys. It's getting late, Mira suggested. I heard Wendy mumble something about Santa Claus. I chuckled at her childness. What is it, Romeo? And <laughs> She looked at me confused. Nothing. Just thinking about how Natsu would look and act, if, act like if he wasn't a dense idiot. I cover up. Hey! We heard Natsu yell. He just laughed. Everyone else was gone, so I walked to the door with Wendy. Good night, Romeo. She smiled and kissed my cheek. Good night, Wendy. It was Christmas! I heard a knock at the door. Uh, then Wendy's voice. Mira wants you guys to grab your stocking and go to her cabin. She chirped. <laughs> Fucking whatever. We were now in Mira's cabin. Uh, Wendy walked in and perked up. Yay, Lox, you're actually wearing the costume. For all of you who are confused that there, Lox just has on a normal Santa Claus suit and hat on. No crown belly or beard, though. Mira had on a red dress with fur lining and also, uh, had a Santa hat on. Lox seemed like he didn't want to be there at all. Wendy went up and hugged him. Thank you so much, Lox, she said. He smiled and looked down at her. No problem. Everyone else is POV except for Wendy and Mira's. What? Did you just hug Wendy? Hers is POV. We were all in a circle. Wendy, why don't you open your stocking first, I suggest. Everyone not in agreement. Really? She asked. Re excited? Yes, really, Romeo replied, smiling at her. Everyone opened their stockings and had fun. Uh, that's not a useful stocking, but whatever. People are stupid. Um. Uh, okay. Uh, everyone opened their stockings and had fun. Then we all brought our gifts and passed them out to everyone. Jal came up to me and gave me a present. Open it, he told me. I ended the ribbon and teared the wrapping paper. I picked up, I picked up the lid. Inside was a beautiful strawberry cake. Look inside the lid, he added, sitting next to me. I flipped over the lid. The next words I read, uh, were the best words of my life. It was a certificate from the Magic Council. Even better, it said, Jalal Fernandez, we have looked into your so-called crimes and found that for all of those you weren't the cause, we have found that Altair Milkovich, uh, but she has already passed on. Uh, but in doing so, she saved the world. In conclusion, we are releasing you from being on the search as a criminal. <laughs> Sincerely, Magic Council. That was a terrible grammar. <laughs> Uh, tears stung my eyes as I placed my hand over my mouth. I dropped the lid due to my hand shaking. Romeo carefully took the lid and passed it around. Everyone was in shock. I turned to Jalal and kissed him. I knocked him over and Mir had her camera out. But none of that matters because Jalal can finally live his life the way he should. With Meredy, the guild, and me. We can fi He can finally stop with the you walk the path of light crap. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. Uh, Romeo's POV. When he came up to me with a present. Here, open it. Inside was a scarf that was pretty close to the one that Natsu had. Only my scarf was the reverse, meaning the color was reversed. No shit! Um, or the reverse of his, but whatever. Uh, me, I hugged Winnie. Thanks, I exclaimed. She giggled. I picked up mine for her. It was a small box about the size of a tennis ball. It was wrapped in sky blue paper and had a silver ribbon. I handed it to her and gestured for her to open it. When she uh, does, she gasped and posed to the small statue of Grandini. I did lots of research and got bunches of the pictures to give to the sculptor. He did an amazing job. I told Winnie to pull the spongy thingy that helps protect the statue up. Under, there was a ring. It was the shape of a rose, and instead of leaves, it had sapphires to symbolize the sky magic. I know, I know. This was very expensive stuff. It's the kind of thing that you buy when your dad is a perverted guy who just wants to see his son grow up. Sure. Now, Lucy's POV. Natsu, I assume, was about to dig into the present I got him. Spicy foods, but instead he gave me a present. I untie the golden ribbon and tear the baby blue paper off. It's to put the letters to your mom in, Natsu said to me, and grins. He gave me a pretty redwood box with engravings of stars on it. Look at the bottom, he says excitedly. I giggle and turn the carefully crafted box over. There in the bottom was the signature of all my spirits. There was even a small paw print of blue on there. I unlatched a golden lock and look inside. There was a piece of bluey gray rock. I question the hold of the mineral. I questioningly hold, whatever, the mineral. Natsu notices and answers. That's a rock from when we saved Macau together. I kiss the cheek. You're so sweet. 
<coughs> Grace POV. Juvie had got me the usual things, food and other weird stuff. I handed her a present. She opened it with a great deal of care. She pulled out a never-melting rose, I inform. She hugs me and I kiss her. I love you, I tell her. Juvia loves you too. Levy's POV. Ganjo gave me a wrap present that looked, sounded, and smelled like a book. So I'm guessing that it's a book. I really don't expect anything else, but it looks... But books, to be honest. I uh, unwrap the present to see a big book on the language of Celion. I hugged him. Be but of course, he had to pick me up. I love you, and you should always know that, Kajra said to me. I love you too, but next time, warn me when you're going to pick me up. I reply, no can do, he simply said, and he put me back down. Aye, aye, aye. Uh, Mirror's POV. I was taking pictures of all my ships, and I mean all. Oxus pulled me down in, into a chair and handed me a gift. It was wrapped with silver paper and had a golden ribbon tied neatly around it. Inside was a velvety case that held a necklace inside of it. The most beautiful necklace I'd ever seen. It was silver, and the charm was a gold heart with a ruby in the center, and on the back, my name was engraved into it. Oxus put it around my neck. I hugged him and kissed his cheek. Thank you, I say over and over again. No problem. Plus, I love these new headphones you got me. He replied and kissed me. Ah. <sighs> Uh, time skip. We were all in the car heading back to the guild. It was the day after Christmas, and we were all kind of sad, except for Ursa and Jalal, because now, because he was now free to do whatever a normal citizen could do, and the best thing is that all my ships are happening in our canon, sure, and I'm glad to say Loxus and I are, you know, perfect. <sighs> okay, so that story is finally over. Good God. <sighs> um... Hopefully we can come back to something a little bit less, uh, would you say, cringy, I guess. I don't know. <sighs> maybe maybe a better story. That's, a, that's another good one. <sighs> yeah, so we're going to end and take a break from reading stuff because I am uh, I'm dying on the inside.